This is Mad Scientist Barbecue's all new The Solution Backyard Offset. And it's fired up so I can do my very first cook, spare ribs. My old favorite to cook on a smoker, if it's the first time I'm ever using it, is a pork butt. But honestly, pork butts take almost as long to cook as a brisket. You know, it's like a whole day affair. But with spare ribs, I can cook these things in like four to six hours, depending on how hot I go. But these are not just regular spare ribs. These are Porter Road spare ribs. So I've told you guys on this channel before how much I love the brisket at Porter Road. Well, the pork products are just as amazing. I've been buying for Porter Road for over two years now, and I can confidently say that they have some of the best pork ribs that you can buy on the market. And trust me, because I have had some of the best barbecue spare ribs in the country as I've been traveling around. And every time I come home and I wanna make some ribs, my first number one spot I'm gonna buy from is Porter Road. From briskets to pork ribs, Porter Road has such high quality meat because they raise their animals the right way. Humanely on a pasture with no hormones or antibiotics. And you can order today by using my link in the description below, which gives new customers 15% off their first order. No codes necessary, just use the link in the description and the discount will apply. Thank you Porter Road for sponsoring this video. Now let's go ahead and get these ribs seasoned. And for the seasoning, I'm gonna go super simple with first some 16 mesh black pepper. And then a nice coat of Meat Church's Honey Hog. So Jeremy Oder, Mad Scientist Barbecue, for those who don't know, has been talking to me about the solution offset since last summer. So he drafted up like super detailed blueprints of the solution smoker, like basically all of the features that he wanted in the smoker. And then he brought them over to Frank Cox from smokerbuilder.com and they teamed up to make the solution a reality. And I know that Jeremy is super excited for you guys to go out there, get your solution smoker and start cooking on them ASAP. And he made sure of that because first of all, the price point of this smoker is $2,500 without including shipping. And the way that Jeremy and Frank set things up, by the time that you put your first dollar down to buy a pit, your pit will be delivered to your door in 52 days. Now, I don't think there's another builder out there who has shorter lead times than 52 days. And I'll have all the info on how you can get a solution smoker in the description box. But you probably want to see how the solution runs first before you spend $2,500. That's why you clicked on this video. So before I actually cook on the smoker, I went ahead and asked Jeremy exactly how the solution runs and kind of to go through the parts so that I can have the best chance of running and successfully cooking meat on the smoker. This is the feature. I don't know if I'm proudest of this feature, but I'm just so happy. It sits right there and it's so close that like the wind doesn't blow the grease out of the way. And it's like, ah, perfect. So I called it the solution because a lot of times in life you have to make a compromise. So you want one thing, but you also want another thing. And it's not a solution there. You just kind of have to compromise with this. I think we actually did find a solution. So there were three things that I wanted to do if I was going to do an offset. And if I couldn't do these three things, then I didn't want to do it at all. Number one is I want it to be built in America. Number two is I want it to be a maximum price of $2,500. And number three is I wanted it to be made out of quarter inch thick steel. This is it, made in Texas, and it is a backyard offset. So this isn't designed for somebody who's gonna do catering gigs on the side. It's not meant to cook huge amounts of food. And I don't wanna get into an arms race about how much food I can fit into this thing. That's why there's only a bottom rack. There's no option for a second rack. Because with a second rack, you're always making compromises in terms of the cook quality. Nothing cooks the same on the top rack as it does on the bottom rack. So I wanted to make sure you have consistent experience on the entire great space. And we're talking about the great space. I wanted this to be able to have maximum great space. Of course, some things are personal preference, but some things are just objectively better or worse. And I did as much as I could to get all of the things that objectively improve the cooking on this pit and anything that might be bells and whistles or therefore the look is not included because I don't need to make a Ferrari. I want to make something that's going to really outperform, that's gonna kind of punch above its weight. And I think that's what we accomplished here. I think we found the solution to that. So you wanna walk through the features. Here we have a big firebox. And so there's no cowboy firebox uh, option because what makes a good firebox makes it a horrible grill. 
So you need a lot of space so you can burn a real fire that's not on the verge of dying. And then you might ask yourself, is this semi-insulated, is it an insulated firebox? Well, it's neither, because I want some of that high heat that's necessary to burn green wood, because that's a big problem that you face a lot of times with backyard offsets, is being able to burn the wood, because a lot of times your, your fire isn't really retaining enough heat to burn the next piece of wood and your fire's on the verge of dying. And then when you finally get it going, then you have nuclear temperatures inside the cook chamber. That's a struggle that anybody who's tried to run an offset understands. And so I want a lot of that heat to bleed off. Uh, and then when it comes into the cook chamber, we have what I call the solution scoop to deal with that heat. So what the scoop provides is all of the super hot gases don't get to come into contact with the food that you're cooking until they have a chance to really calm down. So they get directed up to the top of the chamber and they move across toward the stack side. And as they cool, they actually interact with the meat that you have on the grate. You want to make it as gentle as possible. And then we have a few holes and it might seem strange that we put some holes in that plate. You're thinking, wait, I thought you're trying to direct the air up. Well, one of the issues that you have with directing the air up is right next to the firebox, a lot of times you can have a dead spot. And so in order to mitigate that and to make the temperatures as even as possible along the entire length of the grate, we put a few holes to let some of those hot gases in so you have barbecue weather from one end of the grate all the way to the other. You can use the entire grate space minus maybe about an inch and a half on this end to cook great barbecue. So FYI, this smoker is actually the very first prototype of the Solution Smoker. That's why it looks so well-worn in. You can see that Jeremy put a lot of cooks on this. So most of the features on this prototype are exactly the same as if you were to order it and uh, have it delivered to your house. A lot of the main features, so like the scoop and um, you know the bowed out legs that I really like on the smoker. You can still fit a five gallon bucket under where the drip drain is. Still has this collector and uh, the pipe is exactly the same. The only difference is, is first of all, the smoker is slightly bigger. So this is actually a 23 inch diameter pipe, but the final product actually is a 24 inch diameter pipe, which doesn't sound like a huge difference, but one inch of circumference is actually quite a bit of surface area. You can actually notice how much more great space you get with that extra inch. Also, the final product doesn't have this bar right here with the holes. So this right here is a rib or sausage rack. But when Jeremy was testing with it, he didn't like the way that this inhibited the airflow and just altered how the cook chamber was drawing and pulling the smoke out to the smokestack. It was kind of interfering with that. And then other than that, it's just all ancillary things. So I know that they have different casters and also there's no hinges on the firebox door. And those are just minor differences that they changed just to make sure that this smoker stayed at that $2,500 price point that Jeremy wanted. I already moved the scoop on the inside of the cook chamber right next to that firebox opening to maximize my grate space. My coal bed right now is just about set. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my cooking fire on and then I'm gonna go ahead and throw the ribs on and cook at around 250 degrees to 275. I'm gonna put them bone side facing the firebox. All right, so it's been about two hours since I put the ribs on, so let's check them out. Oh yeah, got some really nice color on them already. Also, you can see the ribs are cooking really evenly. Like I didn't do a biscuit test or anything, but this is a really good sign for this pit. I've been running the smoker at about that 250, 275 this whole time, and I had the damper like pretty much shut. It's at like 75 to 80% close. So it's just getting like really smoky in there and you can absolutely see it on uh, the color of these ribs. All right. So at this point, I'm gonna hike up the temperature to like 275 to 300 so I can get some pull back on the bones and also just kind of wrap up the cook. I don't wanna be out here for too long because I think it's gonna start raining soon. And while they finish, I'm gonna go ahead and go inside and make a rib glaze for the ribs. Okay, so this rib glaze recipe is basically the foundation for pretty much any 
Texas barbecue rib glaze that you'll find if you go to Texas. It's not any one specific rib glaze recipe. It's just something that I picked up as I've been traveling around shooting barbecue story over the last like year and a half. So that's the recipe I'm gonna be sharing with you today. And I wanna let you know that I'm gonna be sharing a lot more recipes like this and also some behind the scenes content if you sign up for my free bi-weekly newsletter. And I'll have that linked in the description box below. Barbecue story takes so much of my time and resources to edit, to produce, and to shoot. And because of that, I'm barely able to post on this channel monthly. So with this newsletter, I'm able to keep in touch with you guys at least bi-weekly as you wait for the next episode of Barbecue Story. But anyways, the ingredients for the rib glaze is just simple syrup, apple cider vinegar, ketchup, and for my specific recipe, I'm gonna be adding a little bit of Holy Voodoo from Meat Church. And I'll have the exact measurements in the description box. Seriously, anyone will tell you that most rib glazes are just vinegar, ketchup, and then like a whole bunch of sugar. Simple, but it tastes really good on spare ribs. Sweet, a little bit of that tomato flavor, vinegary, really good. Exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so we are about four and a half hours. Again, like I said, I really cranked this thing up. I think I was running like 300 to 325 because I really wanted to get these ribs done. Seriously, not trusting the weather right now. I feel like it's gonna rain like any second. Ugh. All right. Wow, really good color on the ribs. And uh, basically all I'm looking for when I'm cooking ribs on the offset is first of all, I'd pick them up and see how much flexibility the bones have. Yeah, these feel pretty good. To be honest, they're like a little bit tight, but I think I'm gonna pull them anyway because I'm seeing a lot of other good signs. So you can see a lot of the fat is rendered. It's nice and sticky. And then what I like to do too is what I call the Joe Yim uh, squish test. So you probably can't hear this because I'm wearing a lapel, but when I squeeze the rib tips, you can hear like this like squishy noise. So that's how you know all that fat and connective tissue in those rib tips are all broken down. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up the glazing station. So I'm gonna let them cook for like five to 10 minutes while I do that. That way maybe it'll help break down some of that tightness. But again, the ribs like right now are done. Like I can absolutely pull these, wrap these, and they're gonna be absolutely fantastic. All right, so the wrap process, super simple. Ribs down, throw some glaze on them, flip them over, glaze up the back, and then wrap it tight. I'm gonna go with a double wrap on these ribs. After about an hour, I'm gonna let these rest, and then we can see how they turned out. So after my very first cook on the Mad Scientist barbecue, the Solution Offset Smoker, what do I think? So overall, I really liked the smoker. It was super easy to run and maintain the temps at the temperatures that I wanted. And I didn't really have to fuss too much with the firebox. Also, I thought the smoker had really good draw and pull. I didn't see any problems with that, even though I thought when I first saw the Solution Offset Smoker, I thought the smokestack was a little bit small for the size of the smoker, but no, nah, I mean, the thing was like pulling really well. And I could just tell by looking at how the smoke was coming out of the stack and also how the food was cooking because I put them in the smoker on purpose kind of like to cover the whole surface area of the cook chamber and they cooked really evenly. So that shows me that the smoker is operating the way that it should. And I really liked how big <laughs> the firebox is. And like I mentioned, this is actually the prototype. So it's actually an inch smaller than the final product. So I can't even imagine how much bigger the uh, firebox is going to be when I get the full version in about a month. But with that said, let's go ahead and check out these ribs and see how they turned out. Okay. Uh, tricky boy. Bro, I suck at cutting ribs. All right, let's try it. I'm telling you, man, these Porter Road ribs, phenomenal. I gotta cut myself another one, man. That was too good. I've just been eating so much brisket lately, like ribs are just hidden for me and these are amazing. Just a beautiful Texas style rib. So in about a month or so, I'm gonna get the final version of the Solution Offset Smoker delivered to my house. And I'm gonna really run it through its paces. I'm gonna try a lot of different cooks and just give you guys a really in-depth analysis and review of the Solution Offset Smoker. But while you wait for that, I have a playlist on the screen right now where I went through a full review of the Goldie's Backyard Offset Smoker. From filling it up with briskets to comparing it with a cheaper offset to just doing a full review of the video. All of that information is on the screen right now. Just click there 
and I'll see you guys over there.